Hello everyone, my name is Roy Jafari and I would like to welcome you to another video. We're going to continue on the progression we have on being able to optimize our code. In this specific video, we are going to talk about recursion and compare recursive solution with iterative ones. If you don't know what recursion is, I would suggest that you actually did a little bit of reading up on it. However, in any case, we are going to have a small part of the video going over what's recursion and seeing an example of it. However, the majority of this video is going to be occupied by seeing a solution with recursion and then solution with iteration and seeing how they can compare to one another and coming to the conclusion about what are the cases that it's better for us to use recursive solution versus iterative solution. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I would like to uh, share here is that before you continue watching this video, go to this page, GitHub page, which is, you know, for this specific YouTube video, and you will see this file, right? And I've already uploaded this file here, right? It's pretty pre-recorded. And um, go ahead and download this file and try to follow along. And once we're done with this video, I'm going to um, upload the uh, newer version, which is the after recording. So you're gonna get, um, you know, the whatever I do in the file, you will have the, uh, the, the chance to also look at and that's fine as well. I'm going to be, I'm going to upload it in the GitHub repository afterwards. All right, so um, iterative or rec recursive. So let's talk a little bit about recursion in Python. Uh, not only programming environment allows recursion. So what is recursion? In the most simplest term, recursion is when you use a function in its own definition. Right, so when we want a function and to complete the function, the function has to use itself, that's recursion. And you might think that creates some sort of like a loop, and that's the whole idea. And the difference between using for loop and while loop um, then recursion is that the recursive loops, the recursive iterations, the recursive repetitions have to be engineered in a way that it's, it does not get into an endless loop, all right? So here we can see an example of recursion. This function, right, multiply, when we want to multiply A by B, of course, you know, we when we multiply A by B, it's so simple for us, but how does the computer actually calculate it? And what happens here is actually a recursion. And basically what's going to happen is a recursion of A, right, plus multiply A, B minus one, right? So this is what our math teacher taught us about multiplication when we were in elementary school. And that's how actually computers calculate multiplication too. Behind the scene, we don't need, we, didn't, we don't know, we just use the star um, operation operator and that just model. let's go ahead and see things in action right so I create this function and pay attention here I've got a print um, added to this function and every time this function is called I see a print right so when I call this function multiply 104 this is what, what I'm going to see the first time multiply 104 is called of course we call them and then 103, right? So this was called, and then 102, so far and so forth. It keeps recursing, and then once it gets to 101, since B is one, it just returns A. And then it sort of like build it back up to get us the answer to multiply 404. And that's when we get 400. So that's how what recursion is and this is the simplest example of recursion um, all right so now let's do a little bit of practice with recursion 
right? So here what we want to do, we want to create a factorial iteratively and recursively. Of course, uh, if you don't know what's a factorial, the factorial of n, n, n factorial is equal to 1 multiply 2 multiply 3 all the way to n. So it's like the multiplication of all the numbers, all the whole numbers from 1 to that number. That's n factorial, right? So now we want to create um, factorial. The using iter it, 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 iterative approach is simple, right? So we just, you know, need an output and we just have a loop and just, you know, multiply the stuff, the, the things that we need to multiply and we just return it. This is pretty much how you are familiar with doing any types of iteration on the computer. However, let's give doing the uh, factorial recursive a try together. Um, actually, I would like to suggest for you to stop the video and try to do this yourself. This is very important because unless you have tried to create recursive functions that are simple, you are not going to be able to do the ones that are more complex because recursive function has a type of sort of like, you know, way of doing it. And unless you have tried and failed and sort of like, you know, come came back from your failure, you wouldn't be able to understand. So please stop the video, give this a try, and then continue watching. I'm gonna, you know, do this here together. All right, so uh, this is my function. So define the factorial recursive, all right. So uh, what I would need to, uh, let's say output, right? So uh, my output is going to be n multiplied by factorial recursive. The recursive function has to be uh, n minus one, and I can just return this, right? Is that correct? Let's let's see. What do you all think? Is this correct? Uh, if we run this, this is going to enter an endless loop. And we can confirm by doing the same trick that we had here. We can sort of like show when something is being um, used so whenever this function is being used, right? So print factorial recursive. And this is just going to be one of them and it's going to be. All right, so let's do it one more time and see what happens. So uh, the way we have to fix this recursion is that when, uh, we have this fixed this and this loop is to sort of like provide a way out for this recursive function and that way out is simply this if n is equal to one so when we have an n any n it eventually comes to one right whenever it reach here what we want we just want to return the value one and that fix our factorial problem. And now we can see it calls factorial 50, 40, 48, uh, all the way to one. And now we get our answer. So to have this cleaned up, we can just remove this. And now we've got our factorial answer. And we can com confirm with our um, factorial iterative, which is, you know, what we are more familiar with and we sort of like try we, we trust better we can compare these values we have to define this first now we compare the values are the same let's see if which there is one that runs faster than the other which i don't think because you know it's going to be the same number of iteration anyway let's just give it a try zero and zero it's, it's you know both pretty fast all right so now that we have a pretty good understanding of recursion now let's see if recursion can actually provide meaningful value for us right here it was kind of an alternative to do things but there are cases that recursion 
are just going to be the better approach. This is an example, right? So in this case of study, we want to create a sorting algorithm. And the sorting algorithm is we want to give an array of unsorted values, just numbers, and we want to sort the value the fastest possible we can. Of course, doing it iteratively is kind of straightforward, right? We pick a number and then, you know, we compare the second number. If it's larger than the first number, we sort of like put it after or before. And then we do this for all of the numbers. And now we will get all, we will get our uh, sorted array, right? And this is the um, algorithm that does that in the sorted array way. I can go iteratively. You can see we've got two while loop that allows us to uh, do this sorting um, here. And since we've got two um, loops going over all of the data, our computational complexity is going to be n power to two. Uh, however, the recursive one, uh, it's kind of an interesting approach to sorting. Uh, so when we get a list, let me actually go ahead and um, copy these two here. We're going to compare them anyway. So this is the iterative and this is the recursive. All right, so now let's talk about this, right? So when we get a list, um, if there is nothing here, right, it's empty. When, when when it's empty, just return itself. And if it's not, just grab one of the values. We call it pivot. And if the value, go over all of the values. If it's larger than pivot, call them left. If it's smaller than, call them right. And then pay attention to the geniusness here. Then return sort recursive on left and right and put the pivot in the middle right so we make sure our pivot right is you know smaller than all of the right larger than all of the right and smaller than all of the left and then we do recursion on the left and right and this keeps happening until everything is sorted do you see the brilliance of it all right, to compare these two, let's go ahead and create a random um, data, random data. So we've got random DF, right? And this is basically a bunch of numbers. Now we want to like test. Um, there are like 10,000 numbers in them. We want to test which one does this faster, right? So let's, let's do this with the iterative one. So I'm going to uh, make sure that it's going to be given to the function as a list and see if this is going to be faster or smaller. So this is an iterative while this is running. Let me prepare the recursive one. It took around five seconds. Uh, now the sort recursive. See how long it takes. It's almost instantaneously, 43 milliseconds. You can see that because we were able to look at the problem in a recursive way, we were able to come up with an algorithm that is much, just much faster, right? So recursion is not just another fancy way of uh, programming. In some cases, recursion can have meaningful impact for your program. All right. So let's quickly go over a video summary, and then we'll also have some time to talk about two lessons we got from this. Right. So the video summary is that in this video we learned a little bit about recursion in Python. We saw an example, and then we did a recursive. An algorithm together and then we saw the 
recursive and also iterative solution for a common programming problem which is sorting a bunch of numbers and we saw how the recursion uh, how the uh, uh, solution with recursion ends up being much faster and also much more elegant so that was the summary uh, the two things I would like for you to take from this video is that there are cases there are two things right the first one is uh, there are cases that doing recursion right uh, makes you to be able to code much easier the case of that is for instance for data that is structured in tree your data structures are tree binary tree non-binary tree recursion makes the act of putting your problem putting your cases into a code much easier we did not see this in this video perhaps one of the future videos we see this however what we saw that actually is the case is that recursion sometimes helps you to um, streamline the way you use cpu and your your memory in a way that your solution just becomes much faster your runtime decreases significantly all right this was this video until the next video